So thank you again for joining us, and I'll turn the conversation over to Dr. Kolakowski Hainer. It's all you. Thank you, thank you very much. much. Let's get those slides up. As Brian said, hi, I'm Stephanie. That's a really long last name that we don't need to keep repeating. <laughs> um, today we are going to um, talk a little bit about concussion and mild traumatic brain injury. And without further ado, I will get that started for you. Um, first off, I would like, um, let's move these slides ahead. All right, Brian, there we go. And done, sorry, getting used to the software. Um, so first I would just like to define what brain injury is. Um, there are a variety of different definitions depending on um, where you're looking. Um, there's acquired versus traumatic, primary versus secondary injury, and open versus closed head injury. And what an acquired brain injury is, is an injury to the brain that is not hereditary, congenital, degenerative or um, induced by a birth trauma. It occurs after birth and is presumed a um, interruption to normal um, brain development. Um, it results in a change in neurological activity. Um, the physical integrity, integrity of the brain may be affected. The metabolic activity of the brain may be affected, and um, it also may um, affect functionality at the um, nerve cell as well. Acquired brain injury is basically an umbrella definition um, that includes injuries caused by external physical forces to the head, as well as internal insults to the brain, such as an aneurysm or a stroke. Um, Non-traumatic brain injuries include stroke, um, neurotoxic uh, poisoning, um, hypoxia and anoxia type injuries among a number of different um, etiologies. And hypoxia and anoxia include basically a lack of oxygen to the brain, which causes the brain cells to die. And um, when they die, they release um, chemicals that could cause additional brain damage within the brain itself. It kind of it releases a neurochemical cascade, if you will, um, of additional damages. A traumatic brain injury, on the other hand, is an alteration in brain function um, that's evident or other evidence of a brain pathology caused by an external force to the head um, with a traumatic impact um, the head is struck by an object or it strikes against an object and it results in either a closed head injury or an open head injury. Um, the primary injury or the initial injury to the brain um, is what defines the injury as traumatic versus non-traumatic. And this information basically helps determine the severity of the injury. It informs sur different surveillance data, such as data that's collected by the Centers for Disease Control or other epidemiologic agencies. Um, it correlates uh, to long-term outcomes in individuals with brain injury. And the mechanism of the injury is mechanical. Um, so basically, for example, the neurons are damaged from a penetrating injury or from a stroke, and that's considered a traumatic brain injury. Um, the primary injury itself causes a cascade of adverse events that um, lead to secondary brain injuries. And it could be, as I said, a neurochemical cascade similar to an acquired brain injury. It could be the release of um, excitatory um, amino acids, it could be oxidative free radical responses or disruption in your neurotransmitters um, that are that could possibly impact um, the brain overall and cause secondary injuries, which include hypoxia, anemia, um, metabolic abnormalities, hydrocephalus, um, intracranial hypertension, uh, different types of hemorrhagic activity. 
Um, and basically, um, these are all things that can occur after the initial brain injury, um, typically during acute hospitalization or rehabilitation. Um, and then the difference between an open and a closed head injury is pretty simple. An open head injury is basically when there's some sort of penetrating brain injury. Um, it's a breach in the skull or a breach in the meninges um, so that the object penetrates the skull and actually enters the brain. And this type of injury often results in um, more of a focal type of an injury, very focused um, insult to the brain. And um, infections are often common after an open head injury, and that could be a significant factor in recovery. Um, closed, head closed head injuries are basically non-penetrating brain injuries, and um, they typically cause what's called the diffuse axonal injury, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But um, the most common types of brain injury include um, a contusion. And basically what a contusion is, is um, simply put, is a bruise to the brain. Hang on one sec. Sorry. Um, and it's basically bleeding on the surface of the brain and it's due to a localized trauma and it most commonly occurs in the frontal or the temporal regions of the brain and it's usually caused by the brain actually hitting bony structures within your skull um, and the contusions can either occur alone or with some more severe um, hematomas, which we'll talk about also. Um, contusions usually occur with moderate to severe brain injuries and often result in bl brain bleeding um, and brain swelling within the first 48 to 72 hours and often require a craniotomy or removal of um, a skull flap. Um, and, and they're most rapidly and accurately diagnosed with either a, a CT scan or an MRI scan. Still getting used to these slides. So as I said, um, there's a variety of different types of hematomas that can occur. It's basically a collection. I don't, not sure if my, um, pointer's coming up or not. Hang on pointer. Yep. There we go. Um, it's a collection of blood um, within the skull. There's a variety of different kinds, as I said. It's most commonly caused by um, the rupture of a blood vessel within the brain um, due to some type of a trauma. The blood uh, collection can be within the brain tissue here, um, which is an intracranial um, hematoma. It can occur underneath the skull um, and causes pressure on the brain, such as an epidural um, or a subdural hematoma. Um, the epidural hematoma occurs um, about half as often as a subdural hematoma, um, and that's when blood accumulates between the skull and the dura mater. And which is the thick membrane that covers the whole brain. Um, the subdural hematoma, on the other hand, um, is the most common type of traumatic intracranial bleeding. Um, and that occurs um, when the blood collects on your brain surface beneath the skull. Um, it's a collection of blood um, below the inner layer of the dura, um, but it's external to the brain and the arachnoid member, uh, membrane itself. And an intracranial hematoma, as I said earlier, is where the blood actually accumulates within the brain itself. Cannot get these slides to go. Here we go. As I said earlier, um, a lot of closed head injury, or all closed head injuries basically um, induce what's called diffuse axonal injury, and this is extremely common um, in concussion. Um, diffuse axonal injury, or DAI, uh, occurs in 
about 50% of severe brain injuries. It's also present in moderate and mild injuries. And um, it's associated with basically traumatic acceleration and deceleration or rotational type injuries where the brain moves within the skull. Um, it's extremely common after automobile accidents, sports related accidents, violence, falls. Um, it's extremely common in shaken baby syndrome and child abuse. Um, and diffuse axonal injury consists of um, basically a focal lesion or tearing of the axons. Um, and the shearing and the lesions are um, labeled as diffuse because instead of occurring in a specific focal area of the brain, it occurs throughout a variety of the different brain um, structures simultaneously. It's not um, only the most common type of brain injury that there is, it also happens to be the most deadly. Um, diffuse axonal injury is not caused by just a simple blow to the head or a penetrating type injury, it's caused by the movement of the brain within the skull. And the most common type of um, diffuse axonal injury is the coup contra coup um, type of an injury where the head's impacted on one side, the brain receives an injury directly where that focal injury is. However, the brain then moves within the skull and causes a subsequent injury to the opposite side of the brain. Um, it's caused basically with a linear type of um, an injury where the it strikes back and forth um, within the skull itself. So it's rapid acceleration and then rapid deceleration um, resulting in what we would call the coup and then the contra coup injury. So the direct injury and the indirect injury basically on the opposite side of the brain.